Hey, good morning. Thank you for joining me <coughs> for Church in the Woods. Excuse me. Hope you guys are having an awesome Sunday morning wherever you're at. Matter of fact, please comment where you're watching from. We're going to get started in just a moment. I'm going to wait and let some more people get on here live before we get going. And I know we'll, uh, a lot of people watching on replay, maybe when they get back from church or wherever they're going today. We just are grateful that you're here and we're thankful to God that we have the opportunity to uh, share his word with you through this platform down in the woods. We're running a little bit late today because we had a tree blow down on the way here. Well, not while we were on the way here, but yesterday, I guess, or day before yesterday, we had a tree blow down and <clears throat> block our way. And uh, so we had to come in a back way. But anyway, um, a lot of people struggle with hearing God's voice. Now, there are people that think God doesn't talk to, to anybody. You know, they, they say, well, he's, he's already said everything he wants to say. And I understand where they're coming from because we do have a lot of people, uh, well, not a lot, but a group of people that want to um, say God told them this, God told them that. Anything that's contrary to the scripture is not of God. God is not going to contradict himself. He's not going to uh, lie. Um, and the Bible settled. Everything that, that uh, needs to be in the word of God is in the word of God. And we're not to take away or add to. However, the Holy Spirit lives within a believer. He's not mute. He's not incapable of speaking to us. As a matter of fact, he does. He leads and guides and directs. I always find it interesting how people can say, well, I don't believe the Lord speaks to people. Well, how did you get saved? I Really, I'm, I'm curious because I don't know about your experience, but I didn't get saved because I wanted to do the right thing because I, I thought, well, I, you know, I think I'll be a good person and I'll get saved and it's the right thing to do. No, I, that's not why I got saved. I already had done that. I already thought I was saved. I was on the church roll, been baptized. And there was no power, no change in my life. I just did what everybody else did. And I thought I did the right thing. I thought I said a prayer. I told the preacher. I got dumped. But when the voice of God started calling me by his spirit, it was different. It was different than any other voice I ever heard. Now, I'm not talking about an audible voice. I'm not talking about something in the flesh, but in my spirit, there was a draw, a draw, and God was drawing me and showing me who I really was. I wasn't who I thought I was. He let me see who I really was, and I was so wretched and so blind and so depraved and I never realized how wicked we are, we. I never understood how wicked man was and how far separated from God we are until he opened my eyes. And my friends, and my brothers and sisters, when he opened my eyes, for the first time in my life, I knew there was a God 100%. I'm not saying that I didn't believe there was a God and I didn't think there was a God, but I knew there was a God. And I knew I was not in good standing with him. And the terror of the Lord come upon me. And a lot of people don't like to hear that. See, we live in a, a time in the end times of great deception and a great perversion, perverted gospel, perverted preaching where everybody just wants to hear something that makes them feel good. Matter of fact, I got some scripture here. The Lord gave me this this morning. I want to read this to you. He says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned into fables. Why? How is that possible? Because of lack of spiritual discernment. There's no spiritual discernment in the majority of the population today. I'm, I'm making a very vague or general statement, but I believe it. I, there's a tremendous lack of spiritual discernment in the body, in the church. And right here's why. He says, because in the last days, we're in the last, he says, in the last days, there'll be a 
people are heaped to themselves. Teacher, I want somebody to tell me I'm how wonderful I am. I want somebody to tell me uh, my promotion's on the way. I want somebody to tell me that God wants me to have a new car and a new house. I want somebody to tell me that I can live like hell all week long and 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 that it's okay if I feel convicted. It just it's just normal and it's okay if if uh, if I'm not in good standing with God. Every, no, most people are not, and all this bull. You, if you're sitting in a church and 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 you're you're you know you're lost, you know you're not right with God yet. You feel comfortable there. You need to get the heck out of that church, period. Because if the man of God is preaching the word of God and you're lost, you're going to be under conviction. The Holy Spirit does not care. I'm, let me be careful what I say here because I don't want to speak for, for him. I don't believe it's a great concern to God of how big a building we have or how technology, how our, we use our technology better than other people or, or we cling to our traditions and hold on to our old ways and all this stuff that separates the contemporary from the traditional, right? I think what God is really concerned about is your soul. Bottom line. It's that simple. There, there's no... Uh, um, Fireworks with that. There's no razzle dazzle or whatever. It's people. Oh, that's kind of that's kind of boring. I thought God wanted me to have, you know, a fantastic life and have a lot of money and and wants me to live for Him and He and he, if I live for Him, He'll bless me and all this stuff. There's been a perversion and a deception, and it's anti antichrist. It's the spirit of antichrist. I was watching on TikTok the other day, and I saw Benny Hinn come on there. The interview he was doing, he, he where he confessed that he had given prophecy that didn't come true, and he made a mistake, and he did, and, and and then he says that he had gotten caught up in the the prosperity gospel and all they got, and he says, "I'm human, I make mistakes." Listen, guys, I'm just going to break it down real real simple for Benny Hinn or whoever. And I'm no, hey, I'm, I don't claim to be anybody, but just some country boy standing in the woods today preaching for the Lord. God doesn't need me to give you prophecy. God doesn't need me to tell you a gospel that makes you feel good. So I can't, I can't say, well, I misheard or misunderstood or, or Lord, forgive me because I, I, I'm only human. No, that, that's a pitiful excuse poor excuse we're all humans we all make mistakes god does it so if god give you a prophecy then it's not a mistake because it's from god if god calls you to preach the gospel and you preach the gospel according to his word then it's solid it's the word of god only when we bend to fit in or we try to make people feel accepted and make people feel good about everything because of the society, is when your flesh takes over. So it's not that you made a mistake, it's that you completely just sinned. You stepped out of the will of God. And repentance is what needs to happen. Not, I'm sorry, people forgive me, but fall on your face, my God, I have sinned against you. That's a great sin to mishandle the word of God. Now, that's not the message, because here's the deal. I want to lay a foundation. We have a such a deceptive time in, in the world today. And I say the world, I used to, when I was on here, I used to say in our country, we're, we're worldwide now. Not, we're on social media. I say we, us. We're all worldwide. We can see what's happening in, in all around the world, wherever they have social media. We can see things happening everywhere. People from other countries can see us today, can see you, whatever you post. I mean, it's everywhere. So we're worldwide. And it's the deception is worldwide. It's not just America. It's not that we're the most immoral country and, and we're just a, we are a very immoral country and we are very wicked. And we promote a lot of wicked things. But most people outside of America want to get here to be a part of what we're doing over here because the lust of the flesh and the pride of life, they want this. They want to have riches and they want to have wealth and they want to have 
immorality. They want to have all these pleasures of life. They want it. And we do too. And if you say you don't, you're lying to yourself because it's your flesh that desires it. Your flesh. I don't care how how you you may dress with you know, dress to your ankles if you're a lady. You may wear long sleeves if you're a man and you may not have any some of y'all don't wear makeup and all this other stuff, women. And and you think that makes you holy. That doesn't make you holy. What makes you holy is the Spirit of God. And you can dress a certain way and you can try to project this holiness look. But if you're full of gossip and full of deceit and full of jealousy and envy and strife and all these other things, then you're fooling yourself. And so here's the deal. Paul says, I die daily. Every single day of our lives, we have to battle. You know who it is? It's not the devil. We, we give him too much credit. We say, oh, I've got, the devil's really after me today. The devil really coming. Let me, let me just tell you this. The devil's not omnipresent. He doesn't come after everybody. The, I, and I know that shocks some people. Oh, my, I can't believe he said that. The devil fights me. Oh, really? So you're making such an impact in the kingdom of God. I mean, you're rocking the world for Jesus. You're, you're bringing the gospel. People, multitudes are being saved. Enough so that Satan himself says, uh-oh, I better go over there to Bladenboro, North Carolina. I better, I better deal with that man. No, my friend. He's not omnipresent. He can't be everywhere at one time. Only God can. But he does have a high, uh, a army. He does have evil spirits and demons and all these things and principalities. The Bible tells us we battle spiritual wickedness in high places. Principalities, wickedness. So there are assigned Places that the devil's working, or he's working, the fallen spirit, angels, or whatever you want to call them, demons are working for him, through you know, for him. So we're in a war, we're in a battle. And and I think the reason the Lord impressed upon me that I didn't know I was going to talk about this when I come down here, you need to understand who you're fighting. Why you're, you need to understand. Because if you don't understand, you can be deceived. You can't see. You can't, you bl you're blinded by the God of this world, by the devil. The whole point is he wants, he doesn't want to be seen. The devil doesn't want everybody to go, oh, well, there, you know, it's the devil. Now, I will say this. I have noticed over the last few years, wickedness is more blatant and out front. We see it at Hollywood. We see it with music. We see it, we see it with, with politicians. So ultimately, the devil does want to be worshipped. He, he's full of pride. That's, that's what had him cast out of heaven. He'd become prideful. So we have to understand there is a spirit of pride that runs everywhere. And it's easy for our flesh to fall into that deception. Now, here's what God laid on my heart. We have many people that have no spiritual discernment. They don't hear the voice of God. They don't understand why. I used to feel God speaking to me. I used to hear God speaking to me, but for some reason I don't. Maybe I'm talking. that's you I'm talking to. Maybe you're that person that says, you know, I don't know why, but I just can't, I don't hear from God. Or there's so many voices talking to me, I don't know which one is God. And I'm not talking about mental illness. I'm talking about spiritually. We can get to a place where we feel that God is speaking to us, but there's so many other things going on. Look, guys, in these last days, it's only going to get more intense. And the only way we can battle this, the only way we can overcome this, 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 this attack, this deception, is to get closer to God, not further away. And the more, the more we go after the world and the more we go after the things of this world the less we're going to be able to hear his voice but the more we surrender to him the more we'll hear his voice i want to read to you and i got a lot to read look i'm not in getting a hurry today i'm just not because i feel like this is the lord give me this for us today go to john the ninth chapter john the ninth chapter if you would hit the share button john the ninth chapter i want to read a few scripture to you and I'm going to tell you, if you don't have your Bibles, you need to get it. And you need to follow me in the Bible to make sure I'm in the Bible. Make sure I'm not just reading out of something else because I'm telling you. You can't trust everybody. Don't trust me. Don't trust me. 
Listen to the word of God. John, the ninth chapter. <clears throat> John, <clears throat> excuse me, the ninth chapter. Thank you for sharing this video. Because when you share, you help us reach more people. And you're being a part of sharing the gospel. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from birth, from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of spittle, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with clay. And he said to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. He went his way, therefore, and washed and came seeing. The neighbors, therefore, and they which before had seen him that was blind, said, Is not this he that sat and begged? Some said, This is he. Others said, He is like him, but he said, I am he. Therefore said they unto him, How are thine eyes opened? He answered and said, A man that is called Jesus made clay and anointed mine eyes and said unto me, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and washed and I received my sight. All right. Why in the world would Jesus spit on the ground, make clay or mud, and put it in a blind man's eye? Why wouldn't he just say, let your eyes be opened? Why wouldn't he just touch him like he did the leper, and all of a sudden he's healed? Now, I know there's a lot of different theories, and no, I guess we'll find out when we get to heaven when we ask him. But I believe the Lord showed me something here. The other morning I was reading in this passage. I believe he showed me because I thought, Lord, why would you rub mud in a man's eyes? Now, here's here's one powerful theory I heard. This is not what I the Lord showed me, but I read this. Someone said, well, he was born blind, probably born without eyes. What a miracle. It's one thing to open the eyes of somebody that has, you know, they, they're blind, but they have eyes. It's a whole nother thing to grow eyeballs in their head. That's, that's, that's taking it a step further, right? So their theory was, well, we're made from the dust. We we're made, Adam and Eve, God breathed uh, breath into us. Maybe God put the clay to form eyeballs. Maybe that was his way of creating eyes. I mean, that's, that's powerful if you really think about it. But I want to talk about the spiritual context because I really don't know exactly why. The Lord showed me something here. This man had never seen anyone, had never seen God, but he heard the voice of God. Listen to me. Somebody listen. He heard the voice of God speaking to him. Now, he didn't recognize his voice. He didn't think, oh, this is the voice of God. But when a man put mud in his eyes and told him to go, and wash in the pool of Siloam. He had a choice to make. Do I be obedient to this voice? Or do I say, man, this is crazy. Not only am I blind, but now this guy stood and put mud in my eyes. It was an act of faith for this man to go to the pool and wash his eyes. I wonder the whole way there if he was thinking with excitement, anticipation, what's going to happen when I wash my eyes? What's going to happen when I finally get where the voice has told me to go. All my life, I haven't seen anything. All my life, I've had no way to, to, to make a living or do anything for myself. But now, I've heard a voice speak to me. It was a different voice than any voice I've ever heard. And I'm going to obey what he's telling me to do. And when he did that, his eyes were opened. The lack of spiritual discernment in our country and in our, around us is so great. God has opened the eyes of many people in the exact same way by the Spirit. God has called you. God has drawn you out. You're blind. You could not see. The Bible says the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. Neither can he know them because they're spiritually discerned. If you don't hear the gospel, you'll never get saved. You have to hear the gospel. There are people that say, well, you know, 
Uh, we can have some praise and worship if people will come to the altar and be born again. Let me tell you something. If the gospel has never been preached to that person, they're not going to get saved. Now, look, they could have heard the gospel 10 years ago, and that seed was sowed in their life, and the seed is there, and God gives it. I'm not, I'm not trying to judge anyone. I'm not going to judge anyone, but I'm going to tell you this. God chose the foolishness of preaching, and the Bible says the preaching of the cross is foolish to those that or they don't believe, but to us that are saved. It is the power of God. God opens our eyes. He calls us to the cross. We're blind as we can be. We don't even have spiritual eyes. We can't see anything. I didn't get saved because I wanted to be a Christian or because I wanted to be a preacher. My God, who wants to be a preacher? Now, I, I, I just wanted to enjoy my life, do what I wanted to do, go to church on Sunday morning, because a lot like a country music song, uh, like a Morgan Wallen song or any of these other guys, you know, you believe in God. Uh, I, I go to church, but I like to drink and have a big time during the week. And I'm going to get really drunk as I can on Saturday nights. But Sunday morning, I'm going to show up and go to church. Or, or, I, or I might step out a little bit and have a, have a little side affair over here with this one. And I might do this. And I, you know, just immorality's out the door. But on Sunday morning, I'll be there. I'll put my money in the plate and I'll listen to the sermon. That's my duty. That's what I'm supposed to do. That's the life I wanted. That's what I wanted to do. I've told my wife many times that she's sitting about 15 feet from me listening in our truck. If I hadn't got born again, we probably wouldn't be married today. I was a whoremonger. I was a drunk. You name it, I was going to do it. I mean, I was wild. Wild and stupid. And God arrested me. The Holy Spirit of God called me and drawed me to the cross. I was blind. I thought I was as good as anybody else. I'm as saved as anybody else. All you got to do is pray a prayer, right? Just pray a prayer, get baptized. That's all you got to do, and you're good, right? No. Jesus said you must be born again. That's something that you cannot manufacture. You can't make it up. You can't work it up. The Spirit of God draws you to the cross. What does it mean, David, that you're drawn to the cross? I hear you say that a lot. Well, I'm going to tell you. When you're minding your own business, you're having a wonderful life in sin and in pleasure. You're doing what you want to do. But there's always a little bit of emptiness inside of you. Just something just ain't right in your life. And you go, man, something's missing. I'm like the rich young ruler. And I I, I, I was, I had all this, I had money and, and people liked me. And I was had a lot of friends and people thought I had my life together. But there was just something missing in my life. And the voice of God called me. And that's exactly what he did to the rich young ruler. And when he told him to leave everything you got, come and follow me, that's when he had to make a choice. He, he could either go the way he'd been going or he could come to Christ. And the Bible says he went away grieving. When you reject God, when you turn from God, you go away grieving. You'll never be the same. When the Spirit of God draws you, you cannot be the same after that because you have had an encounter with the Lord God Almighty. And when He calls you to the cross, that is the time to make the decision for Him. We don't do that because we're good people. We don't do that because we want to do the right thing. That's deception. That's perversion. That's what all these, <coughs> excuse me, a lot of these guys will preach that it's time for you to make a decision. And you just prayed this prayer after me. And we believe if you prayed this prayer, you got born again. I don't give a flip what you believe. What does you believe in your heart? When somebody says, I believe you got saved, that don't save me. It's my faith that God has put in me that saves me. Faith, saving faith. I don't even have the faith to be saved unless God puts it in me. God gives you the faith to be saved and God gives you the faith to stay saved. You can't earn it, you can't deserve it, and you can't keep it. God does every single thing for us. And that discernment rushes in like a wind and you're like, oh my God, I'm so lost. I'm lost and I, I need a Savior. And then you know what? You start thinking about all the times that you heard the gospel. Or you heard his voice. And he was calling you and you would reject him and ignore him. And if it was not for the grace of God, I'd be dead already and in hell. But God who is faithful, God who is loving, God who is merciful, God is full of grace the God of glory that hung on a cross for me and you. He didn't hang on a cross and say, well, I'm going to give them a couple of chances and if they don't accept me, I'm just going to throw them in hell. That ain't the God we serve. 
The Bible says he commended his love toward us to while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. What does that mean? That means that God saw you raising hell. He saw you whoring around. He saw you drunk off your butt, smoking weed, shooting up, adultery, murder, lying, what the heck ever. He saw it all and yet loves you anyway. You show me one person that you can hurt that bad that'll still love you and die for you. You can't find them. You and I have sinned against God. We have hurt God. We have come against God. We've mocked God. We've done it all. And yet he loves us with an everlasting love and with loving kindness draws us to himself. And you say, huh, I don't know about that. I don't do those things. I don't, I I live for the Lord. You're nothing, nothing apart from God. Nothing. The Bible says our righteousness is as filthy rags. You can't be holy enough. It's God in you that makes you holy. Now listen. You're going to say, man, I'm getting confused. Don't get confused because that's the enemy trying to stop. Greater is he to send you than he to send the world. We're more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. That's the Spirit of God in us, not us. There is a time in your life when everything's going to go to hell. You're going to get to a place where you just feel like the world has imploded in you. you what is the use in living? You will contemplate suicide. You'll say, Man, you'll even figure out a way to do it. And you'll say, I'll do it this way or if I did it that. But you're not really being serious. You're just kind of talking, right? Or you're kind of thinking, really. And you're, and you're thinking, this is just, I can't take it no more. I can't take this world. There'll be a time in your life when the devil will sit on your shoulder and he'll tell you you're worthless. There's nothing about you worth saving. Your life is over. You'll never be what you used to be. It's completely gone. There'll be a time in your life. When you'll say, I don't know what to do. I don't know which way to go. I don't know. I don't even know if God's even real. How? Why would a God let this happen to me? If he's so full of love, if he's such a good God. Why? Oh, everybody goes around and says, oh, he's a good God. He's a good God. Yeah, that's because everything's going good in their life. What about when all hell breaks loose in your life? Is he a good God? Is he a good God when your child gets killed on the highway out there? Is he a good God when your wife steps out and leaves you? Is he a good God when you... Somebody you love overdoses. Is he a good God when you pray and you pray and you pray for somebody to be healed and they die? Is he a good God? See, that's the problem with this. These lies of these preachers that will tell you all God wants is for you to be happy and have a wonderful life. This prosperity lie and all this other stuff is, is dangerous, confusing. And when you're in a dark hole in a dark place, nothing is going to help you that they spew out their mouth. It's nothing. The only thing that's going to bring you comfort, the only thing that's going to bring you peace, the only thing that's going to bring you joy in tribulation, the only thing that's going to sustain you, is the voice of God. When He speaks to you, everything, I feel like I'm about to explode. Everything will stop. The world will stop spinning and peace and just everything stops and God says, I'm with you. I love you. I'll never forsake you. I knew this was coming your way. I give you this to walk because I'm going to strengthen your faith. I'm going to build you up into faith. And my glory will be shown through you. Don't fail. Don't step aside. <laughs> Help me, Lord. Oh, my goodness, man. I got too much on me right this minute. Lord, help me. Help me, Lord. Adam and Eve heard God's voice 
in the garden after they sinned. Where are you? Where, where are y'all at? He knew exactly where they were at. He wanted them to know where they were at. He wanted them to know the awful condition and situation was they were now separated from him. The one they walked in the garden with in the cool of the evening. The one that they talked to and heard his voice. Can you imagine the relationship they had? Free. God says, where are you? They heard his voice in the most shameful time of their lives. You may be sitting somewhere tonight, today and you're in the most shameful place you've ever been. And this video just pops up out of the blue and you're like, I don't even know this guy. It don't matter if you know me. Who cares about what? Me? God is saying, I'm calling you. In the most destitute place you can be, I'm calling you by name. Whoever you are, God's calling you. Moses heard his voice on the backside of the desert, out of a burning bush. Running from Egypt because for, to save his life for 40 years, he's in the desert working for someone else. Maybe you're on the backside of the desert, the driest place you've ever been in your life. It's just you're, 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 you're a Christian, but you're just dried up and you don't hear his voice. You don't, you don't, you don't even know if God's even speaking to you anymore. You say, man, I, I know I'm saved. I remember when I got born again. And, and I'm walking by faith because I know I'm supposed to. That's what I'm, it's all by faith. But it would be so nice. It would be so wonderful <coughs> if God would speak to me and just assure me that everything's okay because I'm in this dry place. I'm in this world. I'm on the backside of the desert. And I need a burning bush experience. I need God to speak to me from the burning bush. I need not, not, not to, to, to give me any special attention, Lord. I just need to know it's you. Is there anybody that needs just needs to know it's him? And when he spoke to Moses, he revealed to him who he was. Elijah heard the small, still voice of God. He had called fire down from heaven. He had slayed false prophets. He had stood for God in the, one of, probably one of the greatest ways I've, I've ever read in front of everyone. And he told them all, he says, choose you. It's time we got to make a choice. If, if they'll be God, follow him. But if the Lord be God, follow him. He stood and he asked him, he said, how long do y'all want to halt between two opinions? Let me tell you something, man. I feel this in my spirit. I, the reason we don't hear God's voice is we're caught in the middle. We're caught in the middle. We're, at one time, God had called us out, but we've drifted. We've drifted back towards sin. We've drifted back toward the world. We've drifted back toward deception and the perversions of the Word of God. And that we, we, we had discernment, and, and we knew something weren't right about that. Man, I have met preachers. Look, I... I, I have met preachers, and they're still preaching today, that I knew something weren't right. They didn't act. They were, they were very kind to me. They, they treated me good, they, most of them, and, but there was just something not right. I wanted to be their friend. I wanted to work with them, but something wasn't right. I couldn't put my finger on it. It's discernment. And when, when, when you ignore what the Holy Spirit is telling you, you're not listening to the voice of God. And the more we stop listening to Him and rejecting Him leading us, we get 
indifferent, cold and indifferent. Elijah needed to hear from God. He ran from Jezebel. He was hiding in a cave. A wind came and broke the rocks up. An earthquake came. A fire came by the cave. But the Bible says God was not in any of that. See, that's what the world will give you, guys. The world will give you all these fireworks and all these uh, technolo technology and all these other things. It'll give you what to feed you, to give you, to give you that, that feeling. Man, this is awesome, man. This is it. I've got, I've got goosebumps. I, I feel like I'm, I'm just in an awesome place. But then you go home and you're dead inside. You don't have nothing. And you go, my God, what is wrong with me? I'm going to tell you what's wrong. <clears throat> you're looking for God in the fire. You're looking for God in the wind. You're looking for God in the earthquake. You're looking for God to show up in some big way because that's what we want in our flesh. <clears throat> but God is that small, still voice that's still speaking to you. But you ain't listening. You're listening to everything else. You're listening to the wrong voice. There's a place in, I love the gospel. I mean, I know we all do, but I, I'm an evangelist. I'm not a pastor. I'm an evangelist, but I feel that I'm pastoring on Sunday mornings when I come down here. But I'm an evangelist. I'm not a camp meeting preacher. I'm not a revivalist. I'm not one of these guys that you want to have come and speak because you want to build up a big camp meeting or a big meeting or you want to have... That's not my calling. My calling is the gospel. Repentance, turn. And I'm very passionate about it. Very passionate. And there's a place in the Bible that really throws me for a loop. It's in John, the second chapter. At the end of John, the second chapter, right before Jesus talked to Nicodemus, the Bible says that they believed in Jesus. They're like, we believe in you, Jesus. We believe in you. But the Bible says Jesus didn't commit himself to them because he knew what was in their hearts. And why did they believe in Jesus? Because of the fireworks, because of the fire, the earthquake, the wind, because of the razzle-dazzle, because of healings, casting out demons. All these things that they heard about him. Oh, we believe in, you. <clears throat> believe in you for the miracles you've done. That's the danger of seeking a sign. There are, there are people today, all they want is God to show them a sign. Let me tell you something. The devil will show you all the signs you want to see. As long as he can keep you misled and listening to the wrong voice. God is not in all this stuff we see. God's everywhere. But the voice of God is going to be different than anything. There's no pride in God's voice. There's no bitterness in God's voice. There's no jealousy in God's voice. There's no envy in God's voice. There's no judgmental attitude in God's voice. There's no condemnation in God's voice. There's love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, meekness, and that conviction that you're feeling is a blessing and a gift from God. There's a big difference between conviction and condemnation. Condemnation says you're a loser, and you always will be, and nothing's going to fix it. That's, that's what the devil says. Because he is. He, the, devil, the devil is a loser. There's nothing that can fix his situation. And he's always going to be a loser. He lost at the cross. Isn't that rhymed in it? He lost at the cross. That's been a good title. Conviction is God saying, I love you. And I'm willing to forgive you. I love you. And I'm willing to forgive you. So you didn't sin against me. You didn't sin against your buddies or your, your wife or your husband. You sinned against God. You can say, honey, forgive me. I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have done that. You can go apologize to people with, all over the place. And it's good. We should apologize. We are supposed to apologize. 
But none of that makes you right with God if you haven't come to him first in repentance. Father, I've sinned against you, and I need you to forgive me. I want to hear your voice again. I want to have you in my life. How many times have you rode down the road in your vehicle and never talked to God? I've drove to Missouri. I've drove to Baltimore. I've drove to Alabama. <clears throat> and I remember I went to St. Louis one time. I was going to preach. And I was on the phone. I was talking to people. <clears throat> I was listening to the radio. When I got to Kentucky, and I'm from North Carolina, when I got to Kentucky, I realized I drove all the way to Kentucky and I have not said one word to God. Not one word. And some, you may say, well, that's, that's kind of funny, David. I, really? What if you were riding with me and I didn't talk to you until we got to Kentucky? Two states later, you think, man, what is wrong with him? He, don't, he must not want me to be here. We, we want God to speak to us when we're in a tight spot. But when God's speaking to you when you're having a good time, everything's going good, but you ain't listening. Because everything else is too loud around you. You don't hear his voice. Elijah had to get away to a destitute place to hear the voice of God. And it wasn't in an earthquake or the wind or the fire. It was a small, still voice. Samuel. Samuel heard the voice of God when he laid down to go to sleep. How many times have you been woke up at 2 or 3 in the morning? I'm talking to somebody right now. You've been woke up, and God is saying, I just want to spend time with you. You won't listen to me during the day. You don't want to seek me. You're busy with the very blessings he's given you, but you're busy. You work. You got, you got land. You got money. You got all this stuff, but... The very things God has blessed you are what's drawing you away. Look at the irony in that. Why won't God give me, why won't God make me a millionaire? Because that would become your idol, that would become your God. Samuel laid down three times. God says, Samuel. He jumps up, he runs to Eli, he says, did you call me? He says, no, son, I didn't call you. Samuel goes and lays down. Samuel, did you call me? Eli says, son, God is calling you. The next time you hear him call your voice, you say, speak, Lord, for your servant listens. He lays down again, Samuel, 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 speak, Lord, for your servant heareth. And God gives Samuel the revelation of what was about to come. We're not like everybody else. Christians are not like everybody else. We're not supposed to fit in. You're not going to fit in. You're different. You're odd. You're oddball. You're not going to be. It's just weird. It's a weird place to be here. And if you don't feel that way, if you're not in a place where you just feel like, I just don't fit in, then something's not right in your life. Because he's called us out of this world. He's set us apart. He's made us different for a reason. To be the light of the world, the salt of the earth. I struggle. I struggle with sometimes missing my old life and missing how I used to be and the good times I had and, 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 and the person I was. I miss it sometimes. I do. I really do. I miss being just happy-go-lucky. I miss all that. I really do. And then God reminds me. All those times that I was living like hell and having a big time. I was one heartbeat away from eternity. And what, what is life? You have everything. You have the whole world. Jesus said, what would it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? 
He reminds me of what a blessing. What, what mercy. What love that he called me out. By his voice, he called me out of and called me to preach his word. It's, it, it's more than a blessing. I don't know the word for it. I don't deserve it. I, I don't, I, I don't, I can't even talk about it. There's just no words, but I, I can tell you this. The deception of this world and the, the influence of this world has blinded people to the truth. And the truth is, we were never born to be here to have a good time in life and give God a little tiny bit of it and go on to heaven. It's been a battle. It's been a war since Adam and Eve. Millions, billions of souls have come into this world and gone out into eternity. The Bible says hell is enlarging itself. Does it say heaven's enlarging itself? Think about that. How many people are on the broad path? How many people never know God? Because they're blind. They got ears, but they can't hear. They got eyes, but they can't see. In John 9, the young man that Jesus put mud in his eyes, I believe the reason Jesus did that, because he wanted him to listen to his voice. He wanted him to obey his voice. He said, go, wash your eyes in the pool of Siloam and come back. He wanted him to hear his voice. Because when Jesus came and found him, they kicked him out of the temple. <coughs> the religious people wanted him out. They wanted him gone. They got rid of him. Jesus found out about it and come back. He says, do you believe in the Son of God? He says, I don't even know who that is. He said, you're looking at him. You're looking at him. He said, yes, Lord, I believe. And he worshiped Jesus. Paul heard the voice of God on the Damascus Road. If you had a Damascus Road experience, that means you you know a day and a time. I, I'm not, not necessarily the date or the day. I know there's some people that say, I can't remember when I got saved. Does that mean I weren't saved? No. But you know there was a time when God called you by name. Paul's was on the Damascus Road. Mine was on a golf course on hole number 15. I remember it like it was yesterday. The world stopped. God called me. But it was a lot before that that happened. A lot of conviction. A lot of blindness. And God was pulling me out of the darkness into the light. And it was it was it was rough. It was rough. Because ignorance is bliss. When you don't know what's going on, you don't see. <coughs> it's just it's a blessing. Because I say it's not a blessing, it's it's bliss. Because you don't know how wicked you are. You don't know how wicked the world is. Really. The world just seems normal to you. But when God calls you out, when God's how saturated this place is in wickedness and evil, it's overwhelming. John heard God's voice on the Isle of Patmos. He was exiled for standing for God. And he heard the voice of God. Now you think about this, and I'm closing. I know we've been on here a while. You think about this. You read Revelation. Go to the book of Revelation because some people got on me. I mean, it's not Revelations. I, I know. I, it's Revelation. John called himself the disciple that Jesus loves. He would lay his, his head on Jesus' chest. And they, I'm the disciple that Jesus loves. But what happened when John saw Jesus? in the vision on the Isle of Patmos. What happened when he heard his voice? He said, I fell at his feet as if I was dead. Jesus said, fear not. He said, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. He said, I have the keys of death and hell.
It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the, <coughs> of the living God. There was a time in your life when you were close to him and you heard his voice and you knew when God told you to do something, you would do it. He said, go witness to that homeless guy. Give that guy there a $20 bill. Call that person there and ask him if everything's okay because you just feel in your spirit something ain't right. And that person will be like, I can't believe you called me. I, I was praying and asking God to to give me to, to, to speak to me and give me something and say God was going to use you to speak to them and speak to both of you. All these things were going on in your life all the time. But now it's like, what happened? What happened? The deception of this world is great. Every day you get up, the first thing you and I should do is spend time with God. When God wakes you up in the middle of the night, you spend time with God. Do not take for granted that you're good and you've got enough of God for today because you don't. None of us do. I can preach and I'll say, well, I don't really need to go pray tonight. I preached twice Sunday and I'm, no. that's when I need to go pray. More than probably any time. Because the enemy is coming. There's an enemy that's come to steal, get, steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus said, thank, thank you, Lord, because I got the scripture. I've got to read it, and I'm closing. Listen to what Jesus said, and we're closing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. He's saying there's a lot of false shepherds out there, a lot of wolves out there. A lot of people got perversion, deception. We're in the last days, y'all. We're in this time. To him the poor openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth them. Listen, the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth them by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him for they know his voice and a stranger they will not follow but will flee from him for they know not the voice of strangers there's a guy <clears throat> I think his name is Billy Carson I've been seeing a lot of his TikToks um, they pop up about the Anunnaki and the, 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 the Emerald Tablets and the Sumerians and how all this ancient history, the <clears throat> and he, he, he makes a lot. He started out pretty gradual from the ones I've seen where he was just like, you know, uh, <clears throat> kind of easing into it. Now he's just coming out and saying stuff like, you're your own God, that there's no Savior. You're your own Savior. That was his word. You're your own Savior, and you've got to figure it out. And when you, as soon as you figure it out, everything, you'll have what you want here, and blah, 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 blah. <coughs> man is deceived by the spirit of Antichrist. The spirit of Antichrist is in this world. And I was telling Beverly, I said, you know, I like the guy. I do. I, I, he, he, you can tell he's been through a lot in his life. You can tell he believes what he's saying with conviction. And, and I, I, I respect somebody believing what they're saying because there's don't mean he's right don't get me wrong but somebody that that you know is just a liar this guy's saying stuff that's not true but he believes it and here's what god showed me about this situation i heard the voice of god speaking to me and i heard him say to me Many of my preachers, many of my people do not have the same conviction that this man has. They don't have the same conviction of my word, the same conviction of the truth like this man has for a lie, for a deception. This man is deceived. That man is deceived. He's completely deceived. He believes all that stuff, but he believes it. 
There are many people today that claim to be followers of Christ that do not believe the Word of God. There are places where you question. There are places where you doubt. You know what made Billy Graham so powerful? I believe the Lord showed me this. I always thought, man, Billy Graham, the God, hand, God's hand was upon him. And God's hand was upon him. But there was a time in his life when everybody turned against him that he trusted in the ministry or his closest friends. And he had to make a decision. They mocked him for believing the word of God, every bit of it. Now, these are people that were with him. And they said, you're a fool if you believe. You're, you're ignorant. And Billy Graham said he went out in the woods and took his Bible and laid it on a stump. He said, Lord, I don't know. I'm, 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 I hope I'm not quoting exactly, but it was something along, Lord, I don't know all of what's in here. I can't explain it all. But by faith, I'm going to believe it. By faith, I'm going to receive it. By faith, I'm going to stand on it. I'll go where you want me to go. I'll do what, be what you want me to be. And God took him seriously because God saw his heart and knew that he meant what he said. And the reason Billy Graham was so, Billy Graham was so powerful when he preached was because the hand of God was upon him because he had conviction that what he was preaching was the truth. People that deceive, like Billy Carson, again, I'm not being mean to him. I, you would probably never see this video, but... I don't dislike him. I told you, I, I, I like him because he's convicted of what he's saying. I, I think he really believes what he's saying, but he's deceived. He's deceived. Anybody can be deceived if they ignore the voice of God. They ignore the truth. The voice of truth, maybe, is what I should say. Because he is truth. There's only one way to the fathers, through Jesus. There is no other way. There is no other way. Now, will the devil do everything he can to stop that? Absolutely. Will the devil uh, create any kind of ancient text or ancient views and religion to stop what's coming? Absolutely. Why? Because when we go all the way back, Jesus said, or excuse me, the Father said that Jesus' foot would bruise the head of the serpent. The devil knew Something was coming down the pipe, and he wanted to stop it. It's always been about souls, and it always will be. If you're here today, and you don't hear the voice of God like you used to, and you don't understand what you need to do, I'm going to share a scripture with you in closing. Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man, any person, Here's my voice and opens. I'll come in and sup with him. God's calling you right now. God's speaking to people right now. Are you going to open the door? Are you going to open your heart up to him? 1 John 1, 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He loves us today. He loves you. And if you never speak to God, if you never pray, you'll be a miserable person. You'll be a lost in this world. But God will never stop loving you. He loves you today. You can't earn his love. You can't do enough to make him love you more, enough to make him love you less. He, does, he loves you. And that's why he's calling you right now and he's saying, turn to me. I'll forgive you for ignoring me. I'll forgive you for rejecting me. Why don't you right now, whoever you are, just call out to Jesus. Lord Jesus, I'm sorry. Please forgive me for ignoring your voice. When you wake me up at 2 or 3 in the morning, I'm going to acknowledge you. I'm going to say, speak, Lord, or your servant is listening. When I get up in the morning, the first thing I'm going to do is spend time in your word and in prayer. During the day, I'm going to acknowledge you in my life. I'm going to look for opportunities to share with other people that are hurting. Use me, Lord, in these last days. Make me sensitive to your Holy Spirit that I can hear your voice and do your will. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you guys today. Let the words of our mouths 
The meditation of our hearts be accepted in his sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer, in Jesus' name.